Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of Jane's Speed Shop. So today you can see my car is on the hub dyno. Today we're going to do uh, some testing at Dayway Test Solutions with Daniel. So uh, we will see what it will do on 95 octane. So it's 95 octane, it called, it's called E10, so it's like 8.8% ethanol. But yeah, it's, it's like a downgraded 95 octane with ethanol to 95 octane. So, that is what it really is. So we will see what it will do. So it will be like a bass tune. Maybe we will see something like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 bars of boost. And uh, yeah, so let's have a look. So it can be a little bit noisy. So I will we'll film a little bit in between. And uh, so let's go. Busy with uh, putting the right values in the fuel map. Uh, we got now Labda in the exhaust because my own Labda died. Uh, the reason why, not sure yet. Maybe got too much heat. I think it's maybe been too hot, but uh, it's like um, half a meter to 70 centimeters behind the turbo but the wastegate is bypassing into the downpipe, so maybe it was too hot. But, uh, we will see. It's about lunchtime. We are a little bit figuring out some about the lockup of the transmission because I have speed sensors on the front, so it, there's no option in it to lock it by hand. So we tried it once to get the lockup speed to zero and it locked up fully and it was 59 horsepower difference. So that's pretty much, that's a lot. So I made on 0 0.1, 0 0.2 bar boost, it made 321 and something i thought just over 500 newton meters or something so that's in line of what it should make so original this is 306 horsepower so with 0.1 0.2 bars 321 is not that bad so that's around the number you want to see so now i've put the uh, speed signal of the transmission in the transmission because there is an option in it you can lock it up if it's above 10 kilometers an hour so I want that and then I can put it in fourth gear it will stay in fourth gear and I hope the lockup will stay in that saves me a lot of heat in the transmission and we have a more accurate reading um, and that's what we want so after this we're going to have a look if that works but for now it's still working pretty good the only thing and what now failed is then the the lambda sensor but yeah, we were running on low boost settings, so a lot of exhaust gas were bypassing. And there's a possibility that the heater exhaust gases were damaging the uh, ladder sensor. So it's pretty close to the outlet of the inlet of the exhaust gases into the exhaust. It's about maybe 30 centimeters. So in, through the turbo, a lot of heat is then uh, put into power, so then the temperature is lower. So. And we had like I think a peak of just over 900 degrees Celsius, so maybe that damaged it. In the beginning, I was thinking that the rear exhaust was moving a lot. Maybe the vibrations were damaging it, but when it's 
running like uh, 2500 then it's completely uh, flat underneath the car the exhaust so that's pretty good so there's a little bit of vibration in getting it all onto speed but it makes the exhaust uh, vibrate a little bit so we now have an external sensor in it so just an exhaust tip so it will not overheat it works pretty good and later on I just have to put a new lambda sensor in it that's what I'm going to do first if it fails again then I have to move it further into the line of the exhaust so up till this point works all pretty good oh yeah and also put a different spring in it so one spring higher they say it's 7 to 10 psi so that's um, I think it will run on low say 0.4 bars of boost it keeps so um, yeah pretty good for now So, pretty late today. Yeah. Not get the fully end result. <laughs> so we made a lot of uh, talk, but we didn't make any horsepower after uh, 4,500 RPMs. So I will put the graph uh, uh, on the website down below this video. Um, so what it is, I'm not really sure. So we did, uh, checked all the spark plugs. We got on one bank, they are a little bit darker on the other side. So um, it still made boost up till... Yeah, boost was no problem. Boost was constant, was easy uh, to keep up the boost until, what was it? Uh, 5,400? Uh, yeah, yeah. 4,500. Uh, so it yeah. made around 2,800 RPMs, it made 630 Newton meters, so that's a lot. Um, not too much boost, but yeah. No, no, and it made uh, three, 389, 89. yeah. And then it dropped off, huh? So yeah, it starts to drop. If you raise the boost, it starts uh, starts to drop off here earlier. It peaks sooner and it yeah. drops off. So uh, with uh, really low boost, like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 bars of boost, it keep, it it draws a nice line and keeps yeah, up yeah. the power until the limiter. But if you start yeah. to raise the boost, it starts to get a bit funky and uh, power the drops. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is now. Uh, have a look when I got time for it, but pull all the spark plugs out of them and uh, bore scope all the cylinders and then uh, yeah, check all the plugs with uh, Max says you have a look if I could really get a spark in all the plugs. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, get them again, do compression testing on all the cylinders and yeah, we have to see from there what to do. Because this is still low octane fuel, but you said the timing was not that bad eh, on this low octane no, fuel. I so. can, no, it, it can run uh, quite a lot of uh, ignition timing without running into knock. We yeah. did put it up up to the point where it runs into knock, so yeah, and yeah. then just dialed it back a bit. Uh, yeah. So, so the, timing wise, there's nothing to gain. No, and also the fuel. Yeah, back pressure was a little bit, uh, I have to check the sensor. Yeah, uh, back e pressure uh, calibration was not an absolute pressure. And no, no. So we have to verify if that's 
calibrated okay. That's if it's right. calibrated okay and it was uh, not an absolute pressure, then it's still already a bit on the high side on the yeah. uh, back pressure. So. Yeah, so I got three, three inch down pipe, so bigger is better in this, but it should make easy over 400 with this yeah, down pipe. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the down pipe yeah. should not really be a restriction for the power at no. this e point. EDT was around uh, on the, on the also 900? Also on the high side. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, especially for the for the ignition timing we're running, uh, yeah. times are a bit on the high side also. Yeah. So I think uh, boost-wise, it should not go higher than 0 0.6, but it should run the complete map. Yeah, it it so. should keep up the power until uh, until the limiter. Yeah. Yeah. Or so, at yeah. least 5,000 rpm. So if if it should hit that, it should maybe run just over 400, and that's it then on this fuel, and then it should run on E85. But yeah, if we now have if it was misfire on the last cylinders, then it should do something about the ignition. Otherwise, yeah, but then uh, it should be a very slight misfire because you yeah, don't really hear anything or no, uh, no. can pick it up on the sensor. So Yeah. So that's it for now. So uh, we'll be continued this. So um, I think in one and a half month or something, we will make another appointment and but first we need to find something. Yeah. And then uh, we will see. So, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.